Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Happy Halloween or happy almost Halloween. It's Gibbs Sunday that I'm recording this a couple of Sundays before Halloween. I have had a request from viewer Perch. He requested that I break down a particular song. It's actually not a difficult one and it's kind of creepy and it's got some scary solo shreddiness in it. Simple shreddy stuff. It's something I think almost anybody can pick up and play. Maybe uh, if you're in a band, you're looking for a nice Halloween inspired song to throw into your set this year for Halloween. This would be one that you would enjoy. Um, I don't have a shirt by this band. They are a Philly band, so I'm wearing a couple of other Philly guys uh, on my shirt in, in honor of them. But this band got really well known really well known for a killer performance at Live Aid back in the 80s. They were one of the first bands to play and it was an honor for them to play. Uh, the band I'm talking about of course is the Hooters. Live Aid was filmed very close to where they're from. They were ecstatic to open up. I remember seeing them open up. I mean I was just a 15 year old kid just learning how to play guitar and I knew their songs. I knew they had some like poppy kind of songs but this song was kind of like deep and spooky on several levels and actually I guess on some levels still a little timely. Thanks for the request buddy. The beginning comes in with some synthy kind of stuff and a couple of guitar layers. They were a two guitar band and they were the Hooters so they were known for having that little thing that you blew into a uh, melodica? Melo Melo I don't know. That kind of was their signature sound and I came from liking pop music when I found the guitar, you know, so pop music has always spoken to me. Simple songs that can give impact, especially songs like this that kind of sit with you after you hear them. And one of the things I really remember about this video in particular, not just the song and the vocals and the, the, the lower vocal and the higher vocal and how they blended so well together, which was really a Philly sound, if you know what I'm saying. Um, there goes the pick. All in all, the way that the minor key of the song and the spooky kind of guitar intro with the, with the slide guitar maybe. I, I like to just do it with bends. I'm going to show you how to do it with bends. You can use a slide if you want, but I'm just, I just kind of do bends. It's a little easier um, and we'll go through that intro. It starts off with a simple guitar riff and that riff starts to build up a little bit. So let's talk about that riff first. It's really like an A power chord, 0 2, two and then is what one guitar is doing, the pulling off that C and then to the A and then hammering the, the G, you know, hitting that G. Maybe give it a little bit of, of a bend, but more of just for the impact of that, but the other guitar is doing kind of an A power chord. And that's kind of like a, um, a, the same thing, same kind of a start, A power chord. But with your index finger up here on the first fret of the B string, you kind of do the, this move where you pull your two fingers off from the two, the two fret, the two two, the two twos, and then pull off that so you're not even sounding that in the beginning and then you're hitting the open strings the open D and G and then it starts to build And those are just kind of continuing the ups on that guitar. And you can, the other guitar maybe could do them as downs. And then, you know, you got one guitar player doing ups and the other guy doing downs. And it's a visual thing on stage. Whatever, you know, if it's, make, it, make it part of the show because that's what they were all about. They really put on a good show as performers. They were great players and they were focused on the audience. So this song really kind of just delivers an impact with the chords, the riffs and the, the, the meaning of the vocals. Anyways, let's look at the actual chords of the song. The, the verse is going to be D minor, and then A minor, and then C major, and G major. G major.
but there's a guitar in the background that waits on the one and the three on those down beats. One. Mm. 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 So. You know, and that kind of brings in a little bit more of that reggae feel and uh, that, that that verse kind of has, but still has the creepy kind of a sound because of the vocals. Um, it's just haunting. I and just, so that's, that's really pretty much all that the verse and uh, the choruses are. So just remember to do the double picks on like the two... Two E and a three, four E and <laughs> you know, like the, the kind of in between things. You'll be doing those eighth note kind of things. So that's pretty much most of the song. There is a turnaround that comes in, and if you start it on the D string, it's, it starts off with this little fill up to an F. D E F O two three and it's an F chord. So then you just lift your third finger down to the second. And then you bend that C just a little bit. Or And that, then it goes back to the verse again, uh, does another chorus. The solo then takes just the first two chords, the A and the D, and instead of breaking them up to two chords per bar, it becomes one bar per the, for each of those chords for the first six bars. So you get a bar of D minor, and then A minor, and then it's gonna repeat that. You know, this is, so this is the guitar solo chords. And then it's going to do it one more time here. D minor to A again, A minor. And then it'll do that fill. And then it goes back to the verse. Okay, so let's go over some of the actual guitar licks. They're, they're pretty simple, but the timing of them is what's essential. The phrasing of them is what really helps make them creepy and stand out and become memorable parts on their own. Some of the most memorable parts, I think, are simple parts. So let's talk about what they're doing in the intro. Over those chords, I'm going to turn that compressor back on right now. Over those chords, so pardon any extra noise, it's going to be from this pedal. So over this, over those first couple of chords, um, you get this really nice, like, kind of a band's and so it'd be 20 to 22, and then you do a whole step bend. And then the next time around, it's gonna go 12 to 15. Another whole step bend. And then they're gonna repeat that phrase again and then add to it. So that third phrase starts off just like the second phrase. It's going to go 12, 15, and then bend. Bring it down and go to the 17th fret and bend a whole step. And then you're going to go up to the 20th fret. 20th fret on the E, and then bend after you hit the E string twice. You bend that B string. And then it starts, it goes right into the verse. So now let's get to the solo part. Um, the scary solo licks that, that are really kind of blues inspired. One of the riffs is actually very much taken directly from one of my recent lessons, the pentatonic hack. I'll put that right up here. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you can check it out after. But when we get to that bar, I'll point that out. But there's 
a really burning little spot there where he uses that pentatonic minor phrase that I spoke about. So after just the first A minor that you hit, after that G bend, go up to the fifth fret and then and then twice on the seventh, a double stop on the fifth frets on the G and the B string. So that little riff. The last bar of that turnaround phrase is, is the guitar solo entry. And then it comes in. It goes up here to the 12th fret and then hammers onto the 14 and gets a good shake vibe on it. So that's the G string, 12 to 14. So it's like a hammer and then hit it and then hit it twice. And then the 13th fret of the B string with just a little bit of a bend at the end and then cut it off. And then 13 to 15 on that B string again. So. And then do it again with a big bend. And then just end up on the 14th fret again after hitting that that. 13th fret of the B end up on the 14th of the G that's the the root our, our minor root here of a pentatonic minor which is what we're really basing all this solo around even though we're coming kind of out of a D minor chord that's the four to the one kind of a movement here for the for the solo so the whole solo kind of resolves and revolves around a minor uh, even though there's F and even though there's D minor the a minor is going to work all around it but we're going to use this D to really help bring out and especially with these bends see how we're bending it up a whole note so we're bending the D up to the E to kind of give that four to five kind of movement off of the A or you know if, if you want to look at it that way you don't really even have to so we don't have to get theoretical about it at all it really is Kind of just A minor stuff, you know? So, again. And then it starts off with a really cool kind of a Chuck Berry inspired bend. And they're going to be mostly 16th notes. So it's a pretty steady kind of a thing. But there's going to be one note where we're going to kind of work a little quicker. So we'll get to that. But what we want to think of is this A as our accent. We're going to do, we're going to work our way to that. So we're going to bend the G string, seventh fret. And then we're going to work our way down. Five, eight, five, seven, five on the, on the G. So that's the second bar. So our first bar is going to get introduced like bar one. And then over the A, back to the D minor. And then we're going to go to A minor again, and we're going to use that burning little pentatonic hack here. So if you remember the, the pentatonic minor hack that I spoke of is, is going to be 3-5, and that's going to be the 7th to the root, or G to A, and then 3-5 on the A string, and then 5-7.
but we're going to go real quickly. We're going to hit each one. Uh, I think it's four times. <laughs> Just real quick hammer-ons, you know? So, just to review those two bars again, over the D, we're going to have... We're going to wait one half a beat and go one. And then as we approach that D again, we're going to repeat that kind of a phrase this phrase right here comes up a lot in the solo and then so this is going to be on the four for e and uh so this will be on the four one two three four so again that chuck berry kind of a feel is going to be in almost all of these licks uh, on your way in or on your way out somewhere so Again, so far, the whole solo. And now we hit the A minor. See how we're kind of outlining an A minor chord here? And then back to the A minor. Over to the D minor. So we're bending this four, the fourth note of the D minor scale up to the fifth note. We're bending the fourth up to a, the fifth, and that's a scale tone, you know? So, so it's a safe, you know? And we're bending a G to the A. So right there, we're bending to the root. But it's sounding as the fifth. So after three bends on the eighth of the B string, it's kind of like he slides up, pulls his finger off just a little bit, you know, and, and you can hear a little bit of open string happening in there, especially when I do it, but 15, so 15, and then 13, and then 15 again but down to the 14 on the G. Again, bringing out that A. And then, once again, that Chuck Berry kind of a thing. So let's run through that last little lick. So after you get to the C, you pinch it, you know, hit it a second time and pinch it. And then pull off that A to the G, 7 to 5 on the D. And then 7 on the E. And then back to the 5 7 move. So again, we're bouncing around to this root. So we're always kind of using when we're in this this bar spot. Just always remembering that this ring finger here is going to have our root on the D string. So you hit the A twice. Just like you hit the C. You pinch, maybe, you know, pinch a little bit in there. And you bend and pinch a little bit more here on the seven. And that's all over the... That's all over that last phrase where it's the F to the A instead of the D minor to the A. So you got relative chords, the, the D minor and the F, you know, are so similar. They're, they're relative to each other, but we're all moving. We're using them to move to the A. You know, so the song... It's just moving around those chords, but when we get to the solo, we're really working A minor. So again, the whole solo. So 
and then it continues on after the solo to another verse and then, then the chorus and the outro. And just just a moody, fun, simple kind of song. Easy. If, if you know the low part and you happen to know somebody who knows the high part and you can sit there and strum those chords, fun song to just kind of throw in every once in a while. Um, I, I hope this uh, that you enjoyed this. I hope that this was something fun for you. If there is a particular song you'd like me to break down, leave a request down below. This one was for Perch. I appreciate you, Perch. And he has another request, another Halloween-style request. If I can get to it, I will. I have a gear video that I want to do, and I have um, two other kind of project videos that I've been working on. One of them actually involves, involves this thing. If you've been watching the channel, you've seen this thing change a little bit from time to time. And I'm um, really happy with it now. And Gib Sunday, I figured the Hooters in this, the, the, the singer Eric was playing on, on that solo in the video, was playing this killer uh, double cut Les Paul from back in the day. And, and it had those P90 sound. If you listen to that song, it has that P90 sound, that real punchy single coil sound. It's always been a really cool guitar song, even though it's understated and underrated from the band. I don't think... It's the, the first song you think of when you think of the Hooters. I think most people think of And We Danced or, you know, one of those kind of more popular songs. But this shows how diverse they were, that they really could pull out all the stops and um, all the double stops and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And hit the like button if you liked it. Hit the dislike if you didn't. And subscribe if you'd like to see some more videos. And I thank you very much for being here this long into the end of the video. You all take care. Happy Halloween to you, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry.